BJ and uh, no BJ many years and uh, I'm so honored to be here at UCI and uh, give this ACO lecture. Uh, uh, my name is Yi Yi of Stanford. I'm, I've been mainly working on optimization mathematical programming. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, something and called geometric aggregation of social welfare function in resource allocation. Uh, this is the joint work with my student uh, device at uh, Stanford. So okay. uh, this is working or not? Oh, sorry. So, uh, the music work. Okay. Anyway, so maybe I should uh, Oops. I cannot. If it doesn't move? Yeah, it does not move. Anybody who knows how to do this? Oh, maybe. It does not move. This doesn't move. Oh, let's do the following. Escape? Yeah, I, I did. But I couldn't escape. Even escape. Uh, um, so stop sharing. Hold on. I think it's just you have to click on the actual, no, like with the mouse. Yeah. Oh, and then try I have now. to click mouse. No, no, no it'll work. work now, I think. No. And, and now let's oh, do this. Let's do this. Yeah. And, and, and now, okay, now, now it works. Now, yeah. now get back to now get the a full a slideshow. I will go to play from start. Right. And now see. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Sure. So, yes, sorry. <laughs> so there were so many, many uh, resource allocation problems. Uh, could be uh, even some public good uh, because the capacity limit. So you have to uh, schedule and uh, uh, wisely allocate them to the public. Or it could be like a vaccine. So those slides are created by my student device. So all those fancy things, <laughs> I don't know how to do it. He did it, okay. <laughs> uh, so key question is how to aggregate society's preferences to reflect fair division of the resources. So that's the high level pictures. So typically uh, we use this kind of a linear aggregations. So here UI is the, group I or agent I's utility function. XI is the bundle of resources allocated to agent I. Then WI could be some weight. So when we create the societal uh, welfare, we usually use this uh, linear sum, okay? So we basically maximize it. So WI could be uh, in some social setting, could be the population size, how many, you know, uh, weight and what's the population size in this group, I, uh, or sometimes we present as some kind of a budget. That's the most. So that's one way to do it. Okay. So we just maximize this utility, aggregate utility functions to guide our resource allocation. So what's the best XI to each of agent or group? Another would be I got a pairing with the enforced, like a max mean, those kind of things. Okay. Among all those WI, UIX, that's the group utility value. We select the mean of this group and maximize. We don't want any anyone left out. We just try to maximize the mean. Okay. So in this particular case, and uh, of course, uh, there was another one. It's called, uh, we call the national, national social welfare is take this geometric product. We have UIXI to the power WI, same thing. Then we take a product. So you may think this represents some kind of a geometric mean of this societal utility, and this means arithmetic mean. So this is the one just the smallest group. So which one should we use? Because People nowadays talk a lot of about the algorithmic like fairness. To me, the algorithm does not have a fair or not fair. It's your objective guide, okay? Which solution is fair or not fair? 
because the algorithm is completely fulfill what your objective would be. So in this particular case, so let's take a look. This is a geometric mean objective. We think they have several advantages. Like last year, okay. First, uh, it has some kind of a robust property. Probably in the high school, you already know the arithmetic mean always bigger than geometric mean, right? So maximize geometric mean at the same time and give maximize a lower bound for arithmetic mean. Second one, and also if you enforce this one, that means most WIUI would be equal to WGUG. So that also not that uh, rational, okay? So typically large WI, if you have a large population, si population size in that group, then the whole utility for that group should be higher, okay? But in this case, if you force those, those are counter kind of like a balance. But this one does enforce, okay, WI, which w, higher WI, the bigger the utility value obtained, right? Maximize those. Okay. Can, I, can I ask you? So, a question? yes. So, uh, how much does it matter? Uh, does the mass social welfare maximize the minimum? The same as egalitarian or, or a bit worse? So, uh, this actually is uh, this, yeah, for this one, the minimum would be slightly lower on this scale. Slightly lower. But, but still, much. slight, not too much. Is it well known how much lower? Uh, we can have some kind of a gap and that depend on the utility value. A linear function should be one over the, the, the agent size. Okay. Yeah. So, so let me now I'm going to advocate for use Nash geometric mean, okay, uh, as our guiding principle for the social optimization and also many, many decision problems. Okay. So let me just say some other advantages. Okay. Source families. Okay, so we have two agents. Usually, if you use a linear, uh, can, like, a, like a guidance with a linear, it's basically the big takes all. Who have the largest WI, I should put my own resources into that group. And those people with a small population size, a minority group, they probably get nothing. Because the linear maximization, that's the nature of linear maximization, right? Who can, can increase my social value the most? I should be able to. And if you use that as the guide, uh, as a social uh, value, okay, social welfare. However, with large welfare allocation, I will get to this uh, some portion of the resource. Yes, it's guided by WI, the gap. Actually, you can prove this is the analytical center property. And uh, you know, it's strictly proportional to WI. You have a large population size, you have a majority, you get a majority, but a minority still get a proportional majority share. And also, this is a, a problem. You can also prove uh, even you use a geometrical mean. If the objective is like a linear, each individual group is a linear function. That this was so the rationality of data implies the rationality of a solution. As far as the data as the irrational as the rational numbers, your optimal solution is also rational. What do you mean rational? That means the computable. You don't have a solution like a square root rule. You never get exactly that solution. Okay, so that's the basis for all these polynomial time algorithms on the two machine models because solution can be represented as, as, as the bit size, you know, it's bounded by the bit size. It can be exact encoded. So this is uh, already proved, okay. And also, although it looks like a very highly nonlinear, but you lose log. Instead of maximize the product, you maximize log of this product. Once you have log product, then becomes sum of WI log of those utilities. Okay, 
So as long as, for example, uix is a concave function, this is still concave function. So what's that mean? You have a maximize a still concave nonlinear function, but all the constraints are minimal. So still count as so-called convex or convection problems. So this is what I'm so this is uh, working on. Yes, the first property comes from the fact that it's a rational convex program, right? Yes. That's yeah, a, this is also like a convex, a no, rational no, convex. The, the rationality comes from the fact that it gives you a rational convex program. That's right. Not only as the convex, but also rational convex program. Yeah. And uh, also, calculation of complexity is identical to that of a linear program. Because once you have a linear sum, usually people classify it as a linear program. I don't know how many people know linear programming. Okay. So it's the maximize a linear objective, but here you minimize some of those log functions. Okay. So uh, it turns out that you can prove, compute this solution, not only exact computable, but also the computation difficulty or complexity is the same as the computer optimal solution for a linear program. Yes. Uh, if you solve this optimization for linear program, what restrictions do you impose on the UI functional form? Because that's being just like a, just like this log of this function is concave. Okay. You don't need itself does not need the concave okay. log concave. Okay. Usually, some function is not concave itself, but take a log, they become concave. So VG actually. Yeah, it's a very, very broad class. We have some paper on this. Many, many um, ref, uh, preference functions actually says right, those properties. So this is uh, uh, this theorem. Yeah, I talked to VG many times. To me, the, the algorithmic game theory started the early 2000. But one, to me, one significant result is the proof uh, this function Convex, the rational convex problem can't be computed in, in, in polynomial time. So a lot of people notice those things. But for linear programming, even in the 80s, already have polynomial time algorithms called like, you know, soil method. But for this one, uh, we usually call this as like a geometrical program in motivation field. But turn out that can also compute in polynomial time. So my main message is. Don't be afraid to use nonlinear objective functions. They can be equally easy as a linear program. Okay? And also have some theoretical uh, desired property. Okay? Of course, some additional probability, like MV3, then you know you have a price, and then everybody get an optimal solution, everybody happy, and then you don't have to envy others. But linear programming, you don't have such problems. Because those people get zero shares, of course they will be get angry. As you can see, all the findings. Right. I also is the Pareto sufficient. Okay. And also, yeah, Jeffy, again, I should have added the rational convex. So, why not? Why not use this? So, uh, actually, the talk of today is basically to convince you geometrical programming is large aggregation is as easy as a linear programming, but I have a lot of idea properties which is suitable for economic and social settings, especially for today. So it's the political correct objective. So, okay. It also has some kind of a decentralization property, which is the, okay, uh, through the framework called the Fisher market. Okay. So for example, you want to allocate a resource to all different okay, uh, agent. This is a number of different goods, allocate them. Then you have a UIG. Now, from now on, I assume that uh, each agent have a linear utility okay, uh, on different goods. Uh, difference agent i for one unit of j. Suppose this is the allocation variable, the quantity of good j, okay, allocate to person i, okay. Mm -hmm. Then, and uh, then we can construct the price, okay. So in this particular case, once you have this price, p1, p2, p3, then you can see the allocation on that social maximization problem 
the XIG allocated to each group, it also solve its own individual organization problems. So that's why it's angle free. You get there was no regret. Okay. So and then you can prove and that social optimal solution allocation is also a solution for this problem. So with these problems, P is the price, uh, XI is the bundle of goods allocated to agent I. So this is the how much cost. The cost is less than WI. Is uh, sometimes we can, in official economic setting we call this is a, a budget, or in, in the social setting this could be the total population size of that agent that group. So since it optimizes, so they have this kind of, you know, kind of a decentralized, somehow reach some kind of equilibrium price, everybody as a price taker and the solution we get, maximize this. So there was no more I need to ask. It's already optimized. So in that kind of case, uh, and uh, so basically say, this build this kind of uh, use this large equilibrium social welfare functions. You build this individual optimality and social optimality. It's just a beautiful coincide. And uh, so this is, this is a CJ, it's like a capacity for good G. So this equivalent, once you get this price, and the price actually become, I don't know, if you take any any uh, convex organization or nonlinear organization for each of these constraints, uh, this is uh, all the goods allocated to agent I summed up should be no more than how much available of good G. So CG is the capacity. So those capacity constraints will induce a new variables, sometimes called Lagrangian multipliers. So that optimal Lagrangian multiplier or to be at the equilibrium prices. Yes. For the individual optimization problem, is this problem standalone? Then uh, agent I's maximization is dependent on other agents. It's only dependent on the price. <clears throat> so it does not depend on and but all, how, how that price is also dependent on some other agent. So the price is endogenous. Yeah, price is the actually uh, it, it, for individual organization price exogenous. Exogenous. Yes, yes, yeah. Price, price is decided by the whole optimization for, by the social problems. But once this price is settled, I pronounce this price to the open. Then each people, this individual, they say, take this price as given. Is that called exogenous? For individual, that's called exogenous. But individual members play a role. Yes, yes. Uh, decide this P. That's so right. You, you can think of it as a market equilibrium. Right? Market yeah. Equilibrium. Decided right. by the market. Yes. So you know way that the, the individual agents are actually connected. Yes, they all mixed up. That's through this social aggregation. Because they should be related. So how many share I got from the total society should be dependent on others. Dependent on UIG, WI. And, uh, and CG, yes. So, uh, so they usually this. Uh, so yeah, people usually say this may not. People may not solve this social problem to compute with the P, but it's just a natural evaluation, eva oh. evaluation or which that equilibrium price. Because eventually, and uh, you, you have more uh, supplies, the price will be lower. Less supplies will be up through these interactions. They don't have to solve this problem. Yes, they all depend on each other. So then in equilibrium, there will be incentive compatibility yes. between individual and social. Yes, right. Yes, so this is the beauty of this. Uh, but, but however, if you use a different objective, you don't have this problem. So many students ask why you take this aggregation and that's the aggression built this individual optimal optimal and social optimal just coincides. If you, for example, you just you, you get rid of this log, it doesn't work. Okay, because uh, yeah. So that's why yeah, people all say so in this particular case, price once you get and uh, this is a uh, typically 
and then, you know, how, how, what's the optimal solution for this individual? You just take a look at what's the ratio UPJ over UIJ, which one has the smallest one, right? It's, the, it's like the smallest money be your largest return. <laughs> you just, uh, so it's become like an mean. You, know, you select those one, you just uh, use all your money by from this price, buy that good. I think that's how you buy. You can break the tie, I prefer. You don't have tie. Okay, just take away individual optimal, uh, social optimal, just a coincidence. Very, very good society. So this is a uh, problems. Okay, so this is a uh, new prices. Okay, so now let's talk about a distributed algorithm. I know PG and also people in one a lot, lot of, uh, you know, we can solve that centralized problem. But usually solve that centralized problem, we need a complete information. So this also answer your question, how to reach that equilibrium price. So we can use, so many people think about, maybe we can implement this algorithm, still keep the privacy. We don't know, need to know each individual's WI and UIG, the preference. We just observe, if I open a price, it's like a try and error simulation. I polarize, observe what people buy. And then adjust the prices. Okay. So this is uh, each agent distributed optimized individual cross response to the prices. So we iterate on the prices, try to reach that equilibrium. Okay. So usually it is called the simulated market. Okay. No trade actually take place. We just use that as an algorithm to compute equilibrium prices. So many, many papers and also and uh, invented, okay. And in this case, uh, buy, you, you can pretend the buyer arrives sequentially with the utility and the budget. We just observe and uh, what do they buy? But this is for this simulation market. Today, I'm going to also talk about what's the real market. Can this distributed algorithm implement in real time? Okay, and initially my price would be very wrong. But I can still gradually gain it. I know I have to pay some loss in my social welfare, but I want to bond those social welfare. Okay, so, uh, so this kind of algorithms come to from, so why is purely implemented the algorithm in some kind of like a first order algorithm. We don't need to solve a centralized, complicated, complex optimization problem. Actually implement and simulate the, the buyer the interaction between different agents and the prices and the computer equilibrium. Another is analyze in the real market, which we call the online facial market. So first, I'm just for people, and uh, I know many of you work on this distributed market, okay? But I want to today introduce your algorithms. It's called the ADM market. So you all know what's the centralized, you collect all the information and the details, even those are private, but I need to get that information so that centralized. Okay. But however, another one is distributed. I just want, so you already know, so in the, in the game theory, equilibrium, there was a many primal do algorithm called component right algorithms, which adjust the prices based on description between supply and demand. Okay, so for example, I have three goods, I have try at time t, try this price, then each agent, you know, just uh, compute the optimized response to this price, then Basically, at t plus one, I'm just update the price. A very simple update would be like a linear update if price would be increased, if the total consumption is more than capacity. Otherwise, I decrease the price. So that could be a fine function, could be multiplicative, and all those kind of things. So that's the whole idea uh, the, to reach the equilibrium. So, uh, I'm just quickly review some, okay. 
what of this argument now can prove convergence? Okay, like a arithmetic and the earliest paper by Cole Fleischer, they prove actually this argument. So basically, this is a, a post price, find the optimal solution for each one, then after price of linear. Basically, depend on the total assumption minus capacity. If this is more than that, price would be increased. If this one is less than that component, the price will decrease. The beta is called the step size. Because this is a fine policy. You can prove this strongly con if this converges, actually linear, if the utility function is itself is strongly compared. Okay, so this is a theorem. But however, there was some problems. This is a step size really depend on the utility kind of a, a characteristic. So beta is not going to be fixed. You have to adjust to different utility functions. So this implementation point of view could be problematic because you depend on the if she's constant or something. If you want very conservative, it could be very, very slow. However, I'm going to introduce this ADMM. It's called the alternating direction method multiplier. It's a very general for people working in the organization. This method started in 1970s, which is to basically solve these type of problems. Okay, you have a decision block variable one variable classifies as x variables, the vector, y is also variable called y. So the link by this capacity constraints. And uh, then we build this so-called augmented Lagrangian functions. Okay, so then what do you do? You set initial, okay, price. It's here I call the mu, what would be a Lagrangian multiplier for this constraint apply to fish market, that would be the price. So then we basically, and uh, for fixed price, for fixed Y, we minimize over for X. So this is called the alternating method. Y is fixed, mu is also fixed. This should be also have a mu K. Then once this updated, then we update Y. So it's like you have two agents. First, fix the second agents like a location. You fix the you know, price. You only maximize for the first agent. First agent updated. Then you put that back in. You update the second agent. You do this. Can you think of it as a two-sided matching market? Yeah, you can also put this as a two-sided matching matching market. That's right. Yes, you fix the supply side, and then you can how people respond. Then you can also apply this yeah, to, to that. Okay. So yeah, that's an excellent point. Okay. So this is a functions. Uh, so those are called two variables for these ones. And the theorem says, okay, uh, if the objective function is weakly concave, ADM converts to optimal switch with rate one over k. So k is the index for iteration. Okay. And also on the strong concave of science, the convergence also can prove it's a meaning. So we just want, want to let you know for people in the algorithmic game theory, this method will be for, for applied to Fisher market, could be applied to two-sided market to solve this problem. Could it be also supplied to, yeah, this is a, a, a nice thing about this, a beta, you can design your beta. But once beta is set, this is a fix. So you can control what the beta to use. The beta does not need to depend on the utility function when you apply to fission mark. Okay. So in this particular case, you still have this. So for these problems, what a way particular for this, because we have a multiple agent, it's not actually. And we basically apply, we, we create this kind of form splitting variable this is usually called so we create a copy of xi xi is the bundle of goods allocated to ith agent but this is more than two okay we create we only ask this 
So this problem is the same as this one, but we split this xi into a cock xy. We only need y satisfy those constraints, linear constraints, but xi satisfies the all non-active constraints. So we basically split this into two blocks, right? one called x and y. By doing so, you can you can you can get at the arguments. It turns out the minimize this problem is very simple. You have a closed form solution for this problem. For y also have a closed form solution. This is more like an aggregation. So the argument, so not only the convergence one over k, but also each step is like a matrix vector multiplication. Very simple closed form solution. So you can, okay. Uh, this is a linear update, uh, this beta. Is, it does not depend on the different utility functions. Yeah. Yes. Yes, correct. People yeah. call the yeah. some splitter operator. Yeah. Was, this is what the method uh, invented, I think. Yeah. yeah. So this is uh yeah. In the in the early days, this. Uh, this method is called, uh, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, 1950, 75, or something, or even earlier, or something. I think I got the different, I should have updated. Yeah. Yes. So just show you on this again, get the idea of convergence. Okay. So this is called, the, in some sense, this is like a simulator the market. I post the price, see how people respond. Then adjust the price convergence. But okay, so this is again, it's like a use this web price. Uh, we, you know, uh, Devash did a lot of computation, for example, for a linear utility, which is not concrete. Actually, those tautonomen converge is very slow if, if it converges. And this ADMM converges very fast. Then we use the, some other, it's called the stone theory utility, which is really concave. And then it's still, and then Tataliman converges, but also ADM converges very fast. The computation work point duration is almost same. But, okay, so uh, summarize, ADM provides strong convergence guarantee for a broad range of utility functions, okay. And also the step size of the price update independent utility function you use, you can use, for example, you just take beta of the one. In fact, it should work. But in practice, of course, a different problem you may use depending on how many agents, how many other things you can also adjust it. And it can also be extended to setting have additional linear constraints. So this is a, also agent work base. But however, those assimilating the market prove the convergence, the updated price will converge. But what about in the real market? When I made a, 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 a mistake in the early, the price may be off to optimal ones. I may made some mistake, but at the end, is that a social objective created by those then many while doing prices still have some bond to offline problems to the problem I have a complete information to maximize my social welfare. So that's the issue, which we call the online market. Okay. So can I can yes. I ask you a question about ADMM? Yes. Uh, so you showed these experimental results. Yeah. But you also have uh, 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 Mathematical bounds, yes, that are better than the previous results. Is it? Uh, we, we have a bound of one over k, which is the yeah, that's universal for any any concave utility, including mm -hmm. linear utility. And they are in that in the paper, that's yes, okay, okay. Awesome. that's also in the paper. I need to look it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we already mm -hmm. proved that paper still on the review in the game economic behavior or something like that. Yeah, yeah. so okay. we thank you. Thank you. Cool, but this. But he is now Javash is working on the real market. What happened? So there was many, many uh, problems have these settings. You don't know what the complete information in the future, but you still like to make current allocation. 
and this location is in refocal. Once you make this, there is no recourse. You can you can undone it. So, uh, so let me uh, I, this he told me I don't know they correctly. So this kind of online fashion market has people have done when goods arrive online. So, yeah. yeah. So this is uh, this paper, and what current paper the watch is doing is. It's agent arrive on time. So good. It's already in the market, it's all fixed. That's the Customer, yeah, it's like a normal situation, real situation. People come here, buy something, or people come here, they have a pandemic, they come, but some other place is very quiet. So it's the agent arrive on time. Okay, so in this particular case, agent arrive on time. So whenever agent arrive, I have to decide how many of those portion of this should be allocated to this guy. That decision is irrevocable. It's okay. Mm -hmm. So this we call online, of course. Uh, this online uh, problems, uh, which happened to be for linear programming, uh, we already. I think of it also, and the one special case is like a matching and the head words assertion. Uh, another student of mine now who is in that's what she found. We actually, since 2010, start the right so called online linear program. Linear programming is basically with uh, a mismatch sum of those objectives. Okay. And uh, so, in some case, and uh, so in this case, but basically maximize those linear objective. Okay. Now, because the offline problems of linear programming, then once it's the online setting, we call it online linear problem. So let me give a quick review. What's the online linear program again? Here I'm using uh, abuse the index. This K is the type of K customer. So we have a pack K. That's the rewards come from XK. Uh, 8K demand those resources, ice resources. Then we have a <coughs> capacity is called the BI. So this is like a knapsack problem uh, for people in there. But here I restrict the 8K to in zero and one. Okay, here the decision variable is K. XK has to be between zero and one. In many real application, XK is either zero or one. AIK is the bundle of resources. If I give to the case agent, can sum up, should be less than what is available. Uh, once I give that portion to XK, I get this reward. So this is my social reward. Okay. So you can think about this, the traders. They come one by one sequentially, okay? A uh, buy or sell. Okay, this pi k could be inactive. A k could be inactive. What's that mean? That means can sell to the market. So you can think about this problem is the market maker. You do have a buy part, like a two type of car. one for sell, one for buy. Or uh, could it be mixed. They sell something, buy something. So that can be characterized on this linear program yeah. or even integer linear program. Market map has to make an order field decision as soon as order arrives. That's what I said. So, dilemma, accept or reject. For each of these comments, you can use a zero or one. Zero means reject. You can think about this as an auction, some kind of buy or sell or combination with the option. Okay. Why is the is accept? What is, is the as some kind of online policy to guide the online decision? Uh, so offline problem, yeah, as I said, could it be is a zero or one. Actually, become an <coughs> integer program, which I'll do one of the integer program problems. Now, how to evaluate this online decision process? We basically set the benchmark to be the offline problems. Actually, relaxed offline problems. 
Suppose we know all the information for each of these customers. We saw these problems was the largest objective value, the social value. That should be set as an upper bound for you implement an online policy to compute the final objective value, right? Because this is the basic value of information. Once you know all the information, make a decision, always better than your decision made on the partial information. So the so called regret is saying if I can implement okay, an online policy to decide each XK is a zero or one, how much I can compare to the offline problems. Offline social values. Here we assume pi xik is already determined. We only assume now this customer arrive in a rundown order. Okay. So uh, or including maybe each of this pi k aik or some kind of IID. In typical people do this online evaluation. Okay. For a given online decision policy mechanism, that's so called, we compute what's the expected. So XK was decided online, okay, sequentially. We still at the end of a computer was the social objective value. We take an expectation over all the possible permutations. This is a regret, it's one over expected online revenue divided by the optimal offline revenue. Typically, people call this as a revenue. As I said, this way should be always less than this one, right? So this number should be always less than that. So if this equal to zero, that means Z equal to this. That's the best possible you can hope. Okay, this is for any any online policy. This is over. So again, pi k aik could be determined. You just need some technical sign. For example, this is the boundary. Pi k is the boundary or something. You know, and uh, it can, it's a positive. In the initial, we assume all the aik is the positive. It's like a, like a life cycle. But later on, we extend it to either positive or negative. Once we get this, we take a soup of all the possible A pi. So in some sense, this is also like a worst case. It could be you, you basically can partition this customer into two groups. One is very high pi, one is very low pi. It doesn't matter how you design your pi and okay, your A. And this regret analysis to supply for all the possible A pi satisfy certain condition. For fixed A i pi, this is what the regret defined. Is that okay? So first we have an impossibility result. That's in the paper of Shifra Brava and the Norman. There was no online algorithms or decision policy or mechanism. Doesn't matter what it takes such that if r should be less than this what's the b is the smallest initial inventory in, in operation research the right hand side the bi resource amount of resource sometimes called the capacity or called, called inventory initial like inventory how much goods you prepared for this allocation so this is the smallest one uh, maybe this is a complicated M is the number of goods. If B basically say if this number is less than work M over epsilon square, then it is impossible to have a decision policy such that R is less than O epsilon. Epsilon is for any fixed epsilon. Because this is an impossible result. So that means it's impossible. Uh, 
if this condition is not hold, you can go not get regret a very close to one. However, if B, this what this means, that means the in, initial inventory is not too big. On the other hand, that means if you want to implement this, you want to use online optimization make decisions, you better to have a plenty of inventory initially. Because somehow you have to pay some kind of a cost. Because essentially we have to name you fees like your, your, your cost. Okay. So this is a impossible. Okay. Uh, the paper is in the 2010 and take a few, few years and finally published in the operational research. Okay. So it's called like impossible. What's the possibility result? There was online argument decision policy such that this can be done for this. And this is not to that basically say if B greater than M log N times epsilon square, then there was online argument decision model such that R minus R. So you may think about this as a sufficient condition. The previous result is like a necessary condition. But there was a gap here. Natural conditions log m. Sufficient condition is m. Can you see that? So there was a gap. But fortunately, this gap is a fail. I think this is a, a paper in the, in the, you know, in the, in the you guys, computer science kind of thing. It's called Primal Bit of the View in 2014. And it's a fox of stock. I don't remember exactly. Then they improve. So basically say, if B greater than log M, you can also achieve O epsilon. So that means you can get regret actually close and one, you have a plenty of inventory initially for this online process, patient process. Okay. What's the online algorithms? Typical of this online gram have a name. I'm just give you a toy example. Suppose you want to sell market for some goods. This is the initial inventory. Okay. Then people come to buy a bundle of goods and pay a lump sum fee. For example, the first one want to pay hundred dollars for three items. Second one wants to spend $30 by these two items. Then you can write, once I collect all the orders, I can write as offline inventory programs. Actually, it's the binary zero one integer program. I can show this. But however, again, this decision has to be made in real time. When this order comes, Without seeing any future order information, I have to decide what the X1 to be zero or to one. That's the decision. And it's the <laughs> irrevocable. Well, how to make this decision still goes back to this price mechanism. Can we learn a good itemized prices? For each of this unit of this good. For example, if this would be some type of called ideal prices, then this online decision would be indifferent from offline decision. First, I take a look, $100 by three things. The three things cost the total 45, 45, 15, 105. 100 is the underbid, x1 equals z. Second order, by two things, ten dollars fifteen. This all these two things worth twenty five dollars, but this guy bid for thirty dollars. What's your decision? Yes. Two equal to one. That's it. Me? Okay. So if you do have such a price, does such a price, a so called ideal price, exist? Yes. They would be the shadow prices or due variables 
of the offline LP. Yes. Is it possible to run this algorithm with partial fulfillment? Sort of a oh, you can, yes, you can also run partial, but our proof is proof for zero one. Okay. But it also, if you have a partial fulfillment, that's even better. Because our benchmark it is based on offline fractional linear program. Yeah, but uh, if, if the person has just bid 30 for t shirt and hats, yeah, and you give them for $30 just a t shirt, are they going to be happy? Oh, yes. Uh, so right now we have this combinatorial option. We can either take this for all or we, we don't split the orders. You don't split orders. Yeah. If, if, the, if the buyer wants to split the order, they can put this into two orders. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You want to be the one of them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, don't know, we don't care whether these orders come from the same person or not. Or just, yeah. 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 Okay, so this will be so. What that means? That means we need to name these prices, same as the fish market. Okay, but it's for real. And then market. Okay, so basically say for given epsilon, solve the sample LP and T equal to epsilon n to epsilon with this geometric double spaces, and use the new shuttle price for decision in the coming period. Basically say. At the first period, I'm doing nothing. I just observe the bit. Okay. Once I solved, I solved a sample LP problem. So what's the sample LP? Up to time T here, K, up to the T customers. I basically pretend this problem with T over M resources give this first T customer. We slightly correct by unbiased because you can prove this is a biased estimate in the prices. So we make an adjustment so you can temporarily forget it. So basically, at this time, I collect all this. Once epsilon, I use this resource dealing with this, compute a small sample of the LP, offline LP form. Compute these prices. Then use these prices to make a decision. Then once I collect more. Bio information, then I update the price at this juncture with more with T's larger, with more samples. Okay, so that's how you proved. Because this is a dynamic learning algorithms, okay, and uh, not questions. Can we do this for fish market? For some of work objective. Okay, because that's the big question. Uh, as I said before, I want to convince you and uh, uh, you know, solve. And, oh, this is the one advantage for linear programming. You can prove this nice regret. But however, what I want to show you today is you can do similar things for a geometrically aggregate object. Okay. Really? Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. So, so in this case, I can still define my Offline Fisher market, that's computer with all the information. This is an offline decisions. Okay. And uh, so we pick difference with this. Then we basically, here I have to imagine also constraint of cross work because when you make an online decision, sometimes your total sales may be exceeded. Okay. Total like a capacity. So market is not exactly clear, but I want to know what's the regret. The violation. So here we also take through this, how much I violated, sum up, take two norm. This is the one, this number is more than the available. Okay. Because when you implement an online algorithm, you can have two things. Whether once your unit every month out, you store. Then the rest of customer get zero objective. That's very bad. Or you can still allocate to them how much you violated. So this is a, a okay. So objective, but this is this this is very different. Some people analyze the sum objective, but this log objective can be either positive or negative. So what's that mean? I mean so create a lot of technical difficulty. So I, I'm running on time. Basically, I just want to show you it's impossible 
without possible, if you want to achieve, even you use optimal price. Suppose you already know the equilibrium price. You do this online allocations. Some capacity were, uh, were violated. Okay, so for example, you have two goods, you have two customer, one customer only like uh, the cake, second only like the brand. Each of these agent with 50%, this type of agent, 50% of this agent. So what's the price? We assume initial have N available, N items available. So you can see, you can see the, 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 the expected is to end log two. But however, and the price for this one, this is equal to $2, this also equal to $2. Because you have N half, about half N people like this, half N people, each one equipped with $1 budget. So this could dollars. Then theoretically, you have exactly 50%, this equal to 50, like half N equal to this type, half N. But however, this is the binomial distribution, right? What's the expectation, the differential between half N and those realized the S as a square root N? Yes. So this is called square root N, we grab. So this means the square root N is unavoidable. And also, I want to say, what means square root and we grab? Basically, say the so social welfare of optimal and optimal root geometric mean over actual mean is less than e one over square root n. So that means as n goes large, this would be converted to one. That means the offline still converted to optimal as long as a become bigger. Okay, so this is a, okay. So basically say we, we can solve this analyze problem, but what we did is you know, we still similar to linear program, solve these problems, we can analyze, but here we also design so-called dual arguments, which is simulate to the simulate, which is the identical to the simulated market. So what we do is we still like a price linear, so when we, what we did is we write a dual of that social problems. It has a problem of running out of time. So you can think about the dual problem is the sample average problem. Uh, you still remember mean those because once you give a price and people always select what's the largest ratio of ties to return ratios. Then you can compute what's the sub gradient vector. Is. Then from one to n, just compute one sub gradient, update it. The update is exactly the same as what's the how much you buy for that customer against the, what's the average inventory allocated to that customer. If he bought more than average, we should uh, in price, in, in, in increase the price. Otherwise, decrease price. So I think this is uh, uh, you can prove. Okay, again, you can prove to have a square root. N. Violation also square root. N. You initially have n. Your violation is only square root n. So what's the ratio? Ratio decrease one over square root n again. So you, you can see, yeah, they did the simulation and they use all the arguments and the, so feature market, even those distributed arguments can be implemented in real time. Even you initially off much the optimal equilibrium prices, but you can still put in the long run, your objective and constraint validation goes to small very fast. Okay. This is a simulation, okay. Uh, even your know distribution is okay. Again, we have a simulation. I'm going to post the slides. You can say, basically say uh, the simulation result, computation result, we we'll, we'll only do this one time. Okay, we're we'll not repeatedly do this convergence, just one time. So this is under computing the IID. Okay, not based on 
some kind of a random permutation stuff. So this would be the future work. Okay. So again, um, take away geometrically aggregated welfare optimization. It is as easy as a linear program or linear aggregation. And the more desirable in many social economic settings. That's, that's the main message. Now don't be afraid. Oh, this is not linear. Must be optimal. Must be not be able to recognize properly as an LP. It looks like everything you can prove for LP in the offline, online, you can prove for this. Okay. Okay. Japan, including fairness, complexity, and all sorts of the fish market. As a social okay, can be computed in a distributed fashion and also can be implemented in the real setting. The cluster allocation can be implemented yeah, online as well. With social, you still achieve social as long as you have a long, you don't do a short kind of things. Future work, uh, maybe non splitable goods, which I know people here are also interested. Okay. Extend to geometric social objective for online allocation for bandit and reinforcement learning program. I know it's very popular right now. Okay, people and not only so online LP is like you take orders, make disappear. You can decide which which machine to pull more and less. But you may still have a lot of analysis is a linear objective. Can you do also this geometric aggregate? Extension of non efficient mark and a more general concave utility function, and also proved tight regret bound. Remember, for LP, I proved the impossibility and the possible result. Not quite open. What's the regret lower bound for geometric regression? We still don't know. Right now, we have a square root T. Is that the best you can do? Because for some problems, for linear ones, we can get a log t regret bar. Log t is much smaller than square root t. And t increases, uh, n increases. Okay, so thank you. Okay, thank you. Very much.